This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. in association with the National HRD Network and our knowledge partner Deloitte. We've conducted 15 round tables across various locations with different sub-themes and received tremendous response from the HR fraternity in all the locations. We are back again this year in collaboration with our partners and panelists with another series of discussion on the theme Engaging the 21st Century Workforce. The world's top performing organizations understand that employee engagement is a force that drives business outcomes. Research shows that engaged employees are more productive, profitable, customer focused, and more likely to withstand temptations to leave the organization. Employee engagement has become a strategic approach supported by tactics for driving improvement and organizational change. I would now like to invite Dr. H. Chaturvedi Director, Birla Institute of Management Technology, to deliver the welcome note. Over to you, sir. It is a matter of great pleasure that in this HR roundtable, we have amidst us some of the leading thought leaders from the Indian business, their views and experiences. In today's HR roundtable will be extremely relevant since they represent the wide spectrum of leadership in diverse areas. What are the key features of the 21st century workforce? Its challenges and opportunities. What should business do to remain highly productive and competitive amidst tough trading conditions and a rapidly changing marketplace? The term workforce capability for us refers to an organi organization's ability to accomplish its work processes through the knowledge skills, abilities, and competencies of its people. Capability development places importance on people and their capacity to perform at high levels in a rapidly changing working environment. Developing skills and knowledge is just one aspect of capability development. Being able to apply those skills in different contexts with confidence differentiates skills and capability. At an organizational level, the capability framework can help identify the capabilities required for the business now and into the future. Changing priorities and gaps in learning and development programs, a clear basis for workforce and success and planning, consistent selection criteria, and a clearer understanding of career progression. In coming decade, when India is going to implement Make in India slogan of our Prime Minister, I think the slogan will remain slogan unless we are able to change the fortunes and skills and capabilities of the millions of workmen and employees in this country. Thank you. So what advice do our panelists have for developing workforce capability and designing engagement initiatives bearing in mind the peculiarities of the 21st century workforce. To discuss this at length, I take the opportunity to invite on stage our moderator for the session, Mr. S. V. Nathan. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everybody. Let's come back to the workforce capability. And I want to take this at three levels. First one, at a global level, corporations now compete globally for the scarce technical and professional skills. Everybody knows this. In the remaining part of the decade, it is expected that we'll have 100 million jobs would become extinct. Why will they become extinct? They'll become extinct because of automation and artificial intelligence and machine learnings. On the other hand, you're going to have new jobs that are going to get created demanded by how we manage this complexity. Whether the number of new jobs will arise and keep pace with the ones that will go extinct 
is not predicted today, and therefore the subject of workforce capability is important. Constitution of the workforce in a decade will change significantly. 70% of the workforce will be our young people, the millennials. Most economies, older generations will extend their workforce lives and will be productively invested. Their motivation and approach to work will be significantly different from those of the millennials, as we all very well know. The two trends are producing the most multi-generational workforce that we have had in the history of India. How do you build the capabilities in an organization? This is a very, very interesting topic. What I'm about to do is invite members of the panel to kindly join me on stage. So will all the panel members kindly rise and, and join me here? Thank you for joining us. I have a... I have a question for you, Prabhakar. Prabhakar, workforce transformation happens in a deliberate way for a strategic reason. Often, HR leaders believe they are responsible for leading the transformation. And we believe that we take great pride in owning this. Does this reside with the HR leader, or does it reside with the business leaders, or is this a matter of co-creation? Typically, a question like that can get a very crisp and short response. It depends. From my own experience, I have seen uh, it depends on some very, very specific dimensions and aspects. Who drives it? Who drives the process of co-creation? Does the CEO drive the co process or the HR drives the process? Three specific aspects. It depends on the context. And when I'm looking at context, I'm including competitiveness, capabilities, or even uh, customer. The second dimension is really the time horizon. The co-creation shifts gear towards the CEO when we are looking at a longer time horizon. The more immediate it is, it flows back to HR in terms of taking the lead for co-creation. The last dimension really is in terms of what I call the execution hierarchy. If I have to build the workforce capability at uh, senior levels, then the co-creation gets driven more by the CEOs. But if I'm looking at workforce capability creation at probably the frontline level, HR would take the lead in terms of the co-creation. So that would be my quick take at this point of time. Prabhakar, thank you. And I have a question. The question for you, Rachna, is we, we often hear that the skills gap and building futuristic skills are important. And we have a demographic dividend that can play in our favor, given that India has the youngest population. Given your rich experience across multiple industries such as IT, telecom, energy, power, could you, could you throw some light on how workforce capability has evolved in different industries and how do we manage that expectation? It's a very interesting question on do capabilities have to be different or have to be similar or have to be same? Can you cross-fertilize talent? Can you not? So as I see it, I think some capabilities are very specific, which are more like skills. Some capabilities are very functional, and uh, they are definitely different. However, when we look at leadership capability, managerial capability, and when we look at uh, aspects of people management, I don't think that changes across organizations. And I think one of the challenges and one of the interesting aspects is when you want to hire for a particular role, the struggle is, are you going to look at the potential? Are you going to look at the aspiration, motivation? Or are you going to get uh, closed and clogged within the same industry, same experience? I think work, workforces and organizations uh, need to realize and work in the direction of utilizing the energy out of the younger lot. You know, uh, organizations tend to focus a lot on, at the entry level and a lot when it is time for senior leaders to emerge. And somewhere, the middle management development, either internally or by infusion externally of talent, gets a little limited. So if that is one area that's focused on and a wider pipe reaches the top, that's one capability building. Uh, however, I think one thing which is very important is everybody is unique. Everybody needs a different style. 
to be developed, to be learned, uh, to use learning for, and organizations need to be catering to that. And that's what we want to work on. Katrina, thank you so much. I now have the pleasure to introduce Uma. So I have some question for you, Uma. Question is, what innovations have you witnessed that have successfully met the challenges of enhancing the capabilities and multi-generational workforce? What are your insights? Uh, slightly broadening the question, I would also say that this, gener this workforce that we have today is not only multi-generational, but it is highly diverse. And I'm not only talking about gender diversity, but I'm really talking about the socio-economic diversity that we see at the workplace. Things that you and I, and I firmly put myself in the baby boomers generation, uh, took for granted are not even understood as basic requirements by the workforce that comes in today. And likewise, things that are considered very important by Gen Y are perhaps not even in our horizon and radar at any point in time. And the paradox is because, as the professor very eminently pointed out, we have the demography in our favor, but we are also seeing that people are working longer. So at any point in time, we're going to have at least four generations at a workplace. Now, if you have four generations of people at work at the workplace, then you really cannot gear yourself to any one particular generation. The issue around the multi-generational workforce is to recognize that people are, each one of us is actually marching to a different drummer's tune, and how can you uh, personalize this enterprise capability experience building into each individual's what's in it for me equation. I think the organizations which are able to synthesize this are the ones who are really successful in this task. Thank you very much. I now have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Narendra Kuthari. Can you provide your thoughts on what the private sector can really learn from the leading light of PSUs in their ability to focus on workforce capability and deployment? Why we need talent? Why we need skill? The definitive question is to perform our work. If experience, if skilled person are there, we will perform much better way. And in any profession, we need basically a skill paper. We have to retain the people. We know that nowadays, lot of people change. It is a big problem for the HR department, how to retain the things. But earlier, it was not so. But nowadays, again, we found we recruit a lot of people in still is it. And we found that after training over two years or three years, a lot of people just jump over to the other companies. And we feel that we have trained people has gone. What is to be done? Then what is the reason? Analyze the reason why people leave. What is the reason for that? Then found definitely wages, salaries are more. Comfort of the place is another consideration. So to retain the people, we have to see that people should be reasonably paid. And basic things are to be taken care of. And uh, this is the thing which I want to say at this moment. Thank you so much. Imagine the next level in luxury showers. Combine showering with hydrotherapy. Revive in your very own spa. 
Imagine rejuvenation at any time with the most innovative Grower F Digital Deluxe. Now available with Bluetooth connectivity. गुस्से में लाल ये रोज मेरा रास्ता रोकती और इनका क्या कहना मिन्नते नजरअंदाज करती हैं बार बार मुझे सताना इन सबको बहाता है पर कुछ तो है आजकल इन नादानों पर गुस्सा कमाता है नई स्प्लेंडर आई स्मार्ट इसकी आई थ्री एस टेक्नोलॉजी करीब बाइक स्टॉप होने पर इंजन ऑफ और स्टार्ट भी आसानी से अब पेट्रोल बचेगा तो गुस्सा तो कम आएगा ही हीरो स्प्लेंडर आई स्मार्ट एक स्मार्ट सोच सिंह जी जनता का सारा राशन आपके गोदाम में भिजवा रहा हूँ लो लाला जी तोल दो, दो महीने का राशन नहीं है नहीं है लेकिन यहाँ तो लिखा राशन है अब नहीं है अच्छा मैंने सब सुन लिया है तुम्हारा स्टॉक रजिस्टर खुलवा कर सबको तुम्हारी असलियत बताऊँ फिर तहसीलदार साहब और एस डी साहब के पास जाकर तुम्हारी शिकायत करूँगी जब जे की चक्की भी सोगे ना तब तुम्हें पता चलेगा बस कर मेरी माँ देता हूँ तुझे राशन जागरूक ग्राहक बनिए और अपने अधिकार जानिए Whole talk about car pooling. Why it hasn't taken off in India? In India, buying a car is more a status symbol. If that mindset changes and people start looking car as a mobile solution, that will be the first step. Well, what happens if the car software crashes or it could also, you know, cause an accident? Car is getting more and more intelligent because of the technology that we are driving into it. Having your personalized car, which are connected with the other ecosystem, your majority of the problems will get solved. Specifically from Ford, what do you currently have? We have vehicles on the road that are using LiDAR technology and essentially taking that next step. Ford's perspective on it is that the driver always needs to be there and involved. Ford presents the future of mobility today at 4 p.m. on NDTV Prime. Presented by Ford. when we get into a real question answer session now although we we had the panelists speak about their respective areas what i'm about to do is give them one standard question i'm only hoping that um, your answers are short and crisp so my very first question do you buy talent or do you build talent do you buy capability or do you build capability the cop out answer would be to say both but i think the strategy in our case is to borrow from biotechnology which is to create for every new skill a nucleus which we may buy and then let the cells proliferate by building along that along that nucleus our philosophy predominantly has been 